Hi, I'm Sherry Stump. Thank you for joining me today. I'm reading from the devotional book, God's Amazing Grace by Ellen White. Today's reading is April 11, found on page 109. The title of today's devotion is To Banish Unrest and Doubt. In Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31, we read, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Christ came to this world to show that by receiving power from on high, man can live an unsullied life. With unwearying patience and sympathetic helpfulness, he met men in their necessities. By the gentle touch of grace, he banished from the soul unrest and doubt, changing enmity to love and unbelief to confidence. It is not wise to look to ourselves and study our emotions. If we do this, the enemy will present difficulties and temptations that weaken faith and destroy courage. Closely to study our emotions and give way to our feelings is to entertain doubt and entangle ourselves in perplexity. We are to look away from self to Jesus. When temptations assail you, when care, perplexity, and darkness seem to surround your soul, look to the place where you last saw the light. Rest in Christ's love and under His protecting care. When sin struggles for the mastery in the heart, when guilt oppresses the soul and burdens the conscience, when unbelief clouds the mind, remember that Christ's grace is sufficient to subdue sin and banish the darkness. He will give you grace to be patient. He will give you grace to be trustful. He will give you grace to overcome restlessness. He will warm your heart with His own sweet spirit. He will revive your soul in its weakness. Then stay your soul in confidence upon God. Roll all your burdens upon Him. The soul that loves God rises above the fog of doubt. He gains a bright, broad, deep living experience and becomes meek and Christ-like. His soul is committed to God, hid with Christ in God. He will be able to stand the test of neglect, of abuse, and contempt because his Savior has suffered all this. He will not become fretful and discouraged when difficulties press him because Jesus did not fail or become discouraged. Every true Christian will be strong, not in the strength and merit of his good works, but in the righteousness of Christ, which through faith is imputed unto him. It is a great thing to be meek and lowly in heart, to be pure and undefiled, as was the Prince of Heaven when he walked among men. Thank you for being with me today. Please join me tomorrow when we'll read about how to unify the church. And may God bless you abundantly above all you can ask or think.